know thing. what's an oligarchy? An oligarch, it's basically somebody that it's like a mafioso, effectively. Somebody that dominates a certain part of an economy. And oh. we sign, we've, uh, like the... Uh, like organized crime? Like organized crime, yeah. It wouldn't be like a, like a corporation or anything? Um, well, according to the Occupy Wall Street, for instance, they refer to some of the corporation top people as oligarchs. Oh, okay. But basically, what our protest is, is that uh, Barack Obama recently condoned, knowingly, a very corrupt world leader that fraudulently uh, made his way into office when Which is election. what every, every president of, right. and of all time has done. Yes. <laughs> and and what's, what's interesting is, actually, in 2008, the same leader like was... Like the Shah of Iran and, and uh, the Ugandan president, what was it, you mean, and every president in the history of the world has done. Yeah. Right. So he's doing, he's doing he's done what everybody's doing. He's doing what everybody's doing. But right. I think uh, the time has come that at least we call him on it because Why? the recent well the recent one that took place because he's black no the recent one that took place uh -huh. was against the guy who con is supposedly has a democracy is running a country that's democratic and it's not which that's one his first country Armenia 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 it's a little teeny tiny country between Turkey and uh, Azerbaijan Iran and Georgia it's, it's right, a little it's, long place so it's supposed to be democracy but it's not it's supposed to be democracy and the U S government has been giving the money for years to promote democracy. And his congratulatory letter said, I congratulate you and I look forward in the future to continue working on building democracy in your nation. Mm -hmm. And the guy is WikiLeaks. I don't know if you heard of WikiLeaks? Yeah. It's okay. So WikiLeaks Assange, even... Assange or whatever? Yeah. WikiLeaks even has a, uh, a little section there where they talk about this guy, this particular guy, and how he's dominating more than 50% of the economy and he's the number one oligarch. And Obama knows this. Washington knows this. And what it's come down to is now, because of transparency, the time has come that Americans should stand up and say, enough is enough. You know, that seems almost like a needle in a haystack to me. I mean, we're talking about what we've done over the past uh, few presidencies, what yeah. they've done. It's like, that's almost like a fart in the wind. Yeah, well, but also... I mean, Armenia, really? Well, Armenia, <laughs> really, yeah, because you know what? I mean, look People at every other look at look at every other time it has been done. What's going I mean, on? Look in at even Syria. Pakistan. They're giving money oh, to yeah. Pakistan. They're supposed to be democracy, but they're being they're they're totally. I mean, that's huge. Oh, yeah. I mean, we're talking about ma major ma over the years what they've done over the years, and you, and you're and you're almost like nitpicking with Armenia. It's well, like no, a actually, we're thing. using well, the reason why we picked Armenia. Two reasons. One, it's the most recent. Second is that it's, it's so easy to see everything. It's an example, it's a case study, but we're gonna be covering all of, the, we're making what a documentary about the, basically. The other thousand case studies? Yeah, well there's, other, gonna be mention, there's gonna be mention of all of these leaders, these world leaders who we've empowered. No, 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 you're right. Barack Obama is, uh, can't do anything because he has no experience going across the aisle. There's no way he can reach across the aisle. He's a horrible president because uh, this total gridlock. So we're here, we've made, made it to Utah. We're at St. George, uh, George RV Park, and uh, we're checking in tonight. We're gonna head out early tomorrow morning at uh, seven, so we can make it to Salt Lake City hopefully by 11. And then we'll head over to Colorado, to Denver. So let's see what happens. Okay, so I'm, as I was instructed yesterday uh, from Schiff's office in Burbank, I'm gonna call somebody named Chris he sets up appointments with the congressman, so I am going to call right now and um, see what we can do for the 8th to see if we can get a, an appointment with him, an on-camera appointment, of course. Here we go. <clears throat> yes, I believe I want to talk to Chris. Is he the one that sets up appointments for the congressman? Okay. Is he available? Um, may I ask the yeah, this is Ara Manugian. I'm the uh, guy from Burbank that's been on hunger strike since the 17th uh, regarding the letter we had to Obama. Yes, yes, I would, please. Okay. Hi, Chris. This is Ara Manugian. Um, I guess I'm going to have to uh, fax or email you. I'm on my way to Washington, D.C. now. I'm already in Utah, 
and expect to be there on the uh, 7th, so I want to try to set up an appointment for the 8th if possible. I'm the guy from Burbank that's on hunger strike, 22nd and so I, I live in the 22nd, uh, actually 28th uh, Congressional District in Burbank. So. Um, I believe the congressman knows about me, uh, the people in their office do, and again, I will send you an email or a fax shortly, and hopefully we'll be able to set up an appointment. Thank you so much, Chris. Bye-bye. Basically, our, our whole issue is the, uh, the fact of the matter is, I mean, as far as I'm concerned, the reason why we have so many problems, like you were saying, with well, these terrorist you know, attacks and these whatever you know, I, is... I spent two tours in Vietnam. I was in, uh... I was involved in the uh, Contras and uh, when they were having the war in Central America when they put Oliver North, it just a oh, bunch of bull. How they found an escape goat in the head of the CIA was the one. He was the one. Yeah. I mean, I was just an employee. I wasn't even in this, you know. But uh, they pulled us all out of there. I mean, like crazy leaving out of Belize, I mean, jets going out on a dirt runway, and man, I just wouldn't believe all of it. Nobody knew what was going on while we were pulling out till we got back to the USA, and then and then they had all of Oliver North up there on the well, I, I sure But I still don't understand war at all. I don't, you know, even though I've been involved in it, why? It's why, you, I mean, ask yourself why? Why? Why people? Be happy with what you have, and not be uh, against somebody. The person they recently, uh, they just recently um, congratulated. I don't know if you've heard of WikiLeaks. You heard about it? WikiLeaks. They're U.S. cables between embassies and and Washington. And there was a leak. There was a leak of these cables, and they're like thousands and thousands of these cables. And the particular leader that was recently congratulated, 2010, WikiLeaks, according to the ambassador of the country they're in, is the number one oligarch, uh, most corrupt person in that country, controls more than 50% of the wealth in the country. And they still go around and they, and they know that they commit election fraud constantly. And Bush didn't even congratulate this guy. In 2008, he was originally elected in 2008. Again, another fraudulent election. And Bush didn't congratulate him. You know, I didn't care too much for Bush's policies at all. But that's the one thing that he didn't do for whatever reason. And then this time around, you know, Obama congratulates him right after the international monitors said it's a fraudulent election. There was problems. And then... Obama, you know, Washington congratulates them. Well, you know, I disagree with Bush because of the war. They claim it's good for the economy. Which at that time, you know, iron prices went up. I'm in the junk business. And iron prices went up and copper prices, everything went up. We made decent money out of a scrap, you know. But, and then in turn, the CIA could have took a hundred men, well-trained mercenaries, if you will, and went up there and cleaned that thing up basically overnight. They could have got Bin Laden. They could have got the other guy. Poof! It would have been gone. It had been gone and done with. They would get all the heads of the, the, the guy that's in charge. of they, they could hunt them out. I mean, I've seen I've seen the CIA in action, buddy, and they are cruel, ruthless people. I mean, that's what they're there for. True. Hey, how's it going? Good. How are you? I'm Ara. I'm Ara. the guy that's on hunger strike for the last 18 days. I was just saying, you know, it's it's too bad because America's too stupid to even read the side of your vehicle. Yeah, you know, a lot of people aren't even catching on, but it's it's all about U.S. foreign policy at this point and making us the American citizens look bad in these foreign nations and we're not profiting I'm, from it well you know our, our problems go a whole lot further than how we look you know over there he wants to turn us into you know freaking little europe and we've seen how well that's your you know worked out so i'll take a look at your website i just all right I, yeah. so yeah well 
Nice to meet you. Hey, your name good was? Good luck with Ken. Good luck, Ken, with, nice good luck with, uh... We're going to Washington. I'm supposed to get an answer in a week. I've been waiting three weeks, two weeks already, and they promised me an answer. The truth must be told. Yep. Keep up the good work. I'll Thank you. Rolling. Rolling? Okay. Welcome to Sinclair, Wyoming. Uh, population 433 people. We're on our road. We're on the way to uh, Colorado, Denver, and we decided to stop in to see what the smoke is all about. They've got a refinery here. I guess it's a petroleum refinery. So basically, we're on the road to Washington D.C., and we're trying to get an answer from Barack Obama from Washington, which they promised us actually that they should have it in the next week. Um, I'm on my 19th day, my hunger strike, and we're going across America to get the opinion of. American citizens like yourself that uh, of what their feelings are about Washington re misrepresenting us in my opinion uh, to the world population. Well it doesn't surprise me at all I mean that's how he got elected to begin with right I and mean, there was so much fraud in in the election of Barack Obama it doesn't surprise me that he reached out and and supported someone else who was doing the same thing uh, as far as you know government representing us they used to and, you know, yeah, in the eyes of the world, the government still, uh, the government of the United States is still supposed to represent the American people, but the government of the United States doesn't represent the American people anymore. We made it to Denver, Colorado a couple hours ago, and we've been visiting with an old family friend uh, who has lived in California, is now out here. And we freshened up, took showers, all that kind of good stuff. And now we're going out to dinner at the local golf club. And the restaurant is called Bogies on the, on the Park. So we're going to go inside. I'm going to have my water. And everybody's going to enjoy a nice meal. And then we're probably a little bit later going to start heading out towards our next destination and find a place to camp. So let's go inside and uh, have a nice meal. And I'll enjoy some water. What are your feelings about uh, us being re misrepresented? Our, I mean, basically the president today, whoever it happens to be, not Obama, represents us. When he speaks out overseas, he speaks out for us. And I it really think pisses people off overseas that are the recipients of these corrupt leaders. I think it's horrible what they're doing, and I think he should be uh, tried for treason, what he's doing to this country. And if you could say something to the American people, what would you say? Wake up before it's too late. Wake up and wake up now. Get out, protest, and get involved. Because if more people get involved, it will stop. But don't sit home and watch your reality TV shows every night and think everything's going to be okay. Get out, go to your local town, start at the local town meetings, and speak out and... Tell them, we're sick and tired of being ripped off, being overtaxed. We're here near the Smoky Hills of Kansas, heading towards Washington, D.C. We're about 1,100 miles away. Uh, we've had one interview in Kansas so far, a guy was from Massachusetts, heading towards North Dakota to find work because taxes were too high and taxes are too high in Massachusetts. All right, we're here at the Dwight D. Eisenhower home. This is where Eisenhower, I, I'm not sure, we haven't gone inside yet. I don't know if he was born here, if he was raised here, if he died here. But we know that he didn't live very long, 48 years. Um, so we've got our tour tickets for 1230. We're going to be going inside and taking a look around. So why don't you join us and uh, let's see what they have inside. Only an alert and knowledgeable citizen can compare the proper meshing of the human industrial and military machinery of defense with our peaceful methods and goals. So, and you folks are all from? We're, we're all together. We're one group going okay. to, uh, I'm on a hunger strike for the last 20 days. You are? The U.S. foreign policy is uh, making us Americans look bad. And so I've brought it up with, I've sent a, an open letter to Barack Obama. And basically they recently gave the stamp of approval on another corrupt leader in the world who clearly was corrupt and the State Department knew all about it. Is this you here? Yeah, that's, that's going on. I'm not allowed to say anything. You I can know, understand that. I'm on government understand. property. Yeah, exactly. But well, 
You take care of yourself Thank and you so bless you for what you're doing for the country. Well, we're going to try. Yes. I'll tell you that. Yeah. Alex, it's our duty. No, no. We're coming to the end of our tour here at the Eisenhower Museum. And it was really interesting when we first walked in, we watched a video, which you, know, you, you may have already shown you, you'll see a segment of. And it makes me wonder whether what we're struggling against and what we're protesting against started during the Eisenhower period when a military man came in and, um, you know, basically, possibly came up with the U.S. foreign policy at that time that we're following today. Um, we haven't had a decent president since God knows when. The only reason I voted for Obama because he was the lesser of two evils. And what would you tell other Americans, like-minded Americans or uneducated Americans who don't, aren't aware of this? What should we do? What Stand up. Do? Stand up for yourself. Speak out. It's plain and simple. And let our voices be heard. Because that's all we can do. I mean, if not, then the, you know we're just going to get rep repressed even more. And it's ridiculous. Basically, Obama has to do what he has to do, but we, as the people, we have to guard ourselves and protect ourselves so that we can to uh, accept what's going to come to us. Hopefully Obama equipped us so that we can, if we have a war or whatever the situation could be, to fight. Well, I support my president 100%. If that's what he feels like he needs to do, even if there's a group of people doing this and that's understandable. If that's what, he, if he says it's okay, then I believe that he's going to provide the tools for us to protect us as Americans. So I support my president 100%. And your name was? Tiara. Tiara. Uh -huh. Nice to meet you. Nice Tiara. to meet you. All Thank right. you, Tiara. Uh -huh. No problem. We will. Uh -huh. So we're leaving Lawrence, Kansas. Uh, our last stop was so the crew could get some food. Uh, Freddy's. Freddy's uh, Steak Burgers. And inside we talked to one couple who seemed somewhat interested, but they weren't interested in talking on camera. Um, I guess it wouldn't make a difference because they, they're also in agreement with what we're doing for the most part. So um, anyway, we're heading out. We're going to be driving for most of the night to get as close as we can to D.C. We're 1,100 miles away. We received an email from Congressman Schiff's office uh, stating that our meeting we requested uh, has been set for the 11th, which is Thursday at 1 o'clock with the congressman. And at the same time in my response, I asked them if they could uh, check to see if if they can arrange a meeting with somebody from the Obama administration and also from the State Department to discuss this issue. And they said they would uh, have their staff work on that and get back to us. So we're hopeful that, you know, we will we'll get a few meetings. We've also got somebody in Washington, D.C. trying to set up other meetings uh, that we can do during our time there because it looks like we're going to be there for about five days. So this will be a good opportunity to get, uh, you know, for and against what we're doing and, and have it ready for our documentary and go from there. So we're heading out now to Washington DC. We're a thousand one hundred miles away I guess and we should be there in two days. So. Share a little bit about your your views on this if you could. It's just very troubling to just make a symbolic stand instead of an informed stand and um, as an American, that's troubling, but as an Armenian American, it's, I think it's despicable. Um, but people need to stand up for what's right, no matter the consequences. And if there were more courageous people to stand up, then maybe the tide would turn. And so you have to stand up for what's right and then just let the cards fall as they may. But, um, you know, as Christians, we want to see the truth because that's what sets us free. We've made it to Maryland. We're just outside of DC um, and we've come to a friend's house where we're gonna rest up for a few minutes and then we're gonna start filling balloons for our demo today. We're gonna be doing a demonstration or a celebration in front of the Armenian um, Embassy in Washington DC. So right now our balloons just arrived. So let's go answer the door and uh, get the balloons. Hang on. So we had ordered up a couple thousand balloons a while back at the beginning of our campaign 
Um, and it's a positive campaign that uh, the new president of our, the elected president of Armenia, Rafael Venetian, has started. And Padev means hello. So right now I'm online, I'm looking for a law that prohibits, prohibits us possibly from doing a balloon launch. Um, there are some states that only allow you to launch 10 balloons or whatever, but I haven't found one yet. So if that's the case, pretty soon, in the next couple hours, over the District of Columbia, you're going to see a bunch of orange Padev balloons flying over the state capitol. And uh, so that's our plan right now. So we're, we're all, we've got an operation going here where we're filling up balloons um, and getting them ready for this launch. So our next stop is going to be the Armenian Embassy uh, in the District of Columbia. California law, Connecticut, Florida, and Virginia have passed balloon laws that, re that apply to latex balloons. The Connecticut law prevents the release of 10 balloons or more filled with helium. Okay, so we're going to have a balloon launch because it doesn't. It's there's four states only that have this law that prohibits balloon launches. Which states are they? It's uh, Connecticut, Florida, Tennessee, and Virginia. So we're set. Only four right now. So until we do our balloon launch, they're not going to pass a law. Um, Florida has one, but that's for 25 balloons, but we're not in Florida. Which is your and Virginia law prohibits the release of 50 or more balloons. So even if we were in Virginia, we only have 50 balloons that we're going to release. So we're good. All right. All right. So we've arrived to the. Uh, yeah, Alex. We've arrived to the Armenian Embassy here in Washington, D.C., and we're going to have a celebration to uh, mark the event of. The upcoming event on the 9th, which is the inauguration of Rafi Hovhannisyan, the truly elected uh, president of Armenia. So let's step over here, and this is the embassy. This is Armenia's embassy. Whoop. So we're here. We finally made it to Washington, D.C. Uh, our first stop today is in front of the Armenian embassy, which is the, uh, in our opinion, and under the circumstances, not even a legitimate embassy because they follow the orders of an illegitimately elected president, president, or I don't even call him de facto president, Sarkisyan. And we're here because we're celebrating the uh, start of a new Armenia. And what I mean by the start of a new Armenia is Rafi Hovhannisyan, the president-elect of Armenia, who will be inaugurated on the 9th of April, will start his uh, work by cleaning up our country of the corruption and of the problems that are plaguing it today. So today is our celebration. We brought with us the Padev balloons uh, from Los Angeles and we filled them up with helium. So we're going to be launching these in the a sign of a, a celebratory sign to show that we are in fact very pleased with the outcome of the recent elections in terms of the real man that is going to lead our country is going to be Rafi Hovhannisyan, who is in fact the president-elect in the eyes of most of us, the majority of the country and the, and the diaspora. Parev. spring started yesterday and unfortunately in Armenia spring didn't start in fact some very bad things started today the de facto president that Barack Obama congratulated on the 2nd of March has been inaugurated as president so officially as the world sees it he is the president of Armenia that test is unacceptable because he actually is a de facto president based on the way that he was elected so we didn't get an answer from Barack Obama, but what I've decided is it's time to stop the hunger strike today because a new struggle has to start. And we have to now start exposing U.S. foreign policy and how it affects us, the American people, and the final outcome. And this is a tragedy that Barack Obama did not answer in time and did not withdraw his congratulations prior to the inauguration. I, as an American citizen, am very disappointed though deep down I was expecting this would happen because unfortunately what we've seen over 
probably the last 50 or so years is it doesn't matter what, what the Americans think. Washington does what Washington wants to do, and they try to brainwash us to believe that's in our best interest, which it's not. So we're going to wrap up our hunger strike today, and we're going to move on to the next phase of our campaign to educate the American people on what U.S. foreign policy actually is and how it does misrepresent us and not the interests of us, the American people, as far as our beliefs, our our, what this country was built on and how it also is causing a great deal of damage to the people in which we mess around in their countries and empower these corrupt leaders. So the hunger strike ends today and we're going to be heading back to uh, California in a couple days. I have a meeting with Adam Schiff's office on Thursday and we'll see what happens then. Um, it's not going to be an on-camera interview because he's not ready for that, because all the information isn't in that he needs, but he's agreed that once he's back in Burbank, he will do it on camera, and I agree to that because that does make the most sense at this point. I mean, what is he gonna say, right, at this, at this very juncture, especially since all the results aren't in. We wanna see what the OSCE comes up with and what the final results are gonna be of the election and whatever other uh, information we're able to uncover. So Barack Obama, you had your chance. This is the 9th of, of April and you didn't withdraw your congratulations from a very corrupt and very well known to you. By the way, we found a news article that has been uh, deleted from the internet and it seems that the ambassador to Armenia, the U.S. ambassador to Armenia actually reached out to Ser Sarkisyan two days after the election and encouraged him to, to uh, do what he has to for a second round because things weren't quite right. This was deleted from the internet, there was no, there was no, re the, uh, the embassy did not refute this report, instead the news agencies just pulled it, so we don't know the, the full accuracy of it, but I am going to have to assume that it actually did happen, because if it didn't, I'm going to give the U.S. Embassy an opportunity to rebut this and to say that it didn't actually happen in writing. At that time, and only at that time, will I say that that did not happen. But in the meanwhile, Mr. President, um, we're going to give you a few more chances to fix what's broken. And this is one of the things that's broken. U.S. foreign policy has to represent us, the American people, and not big business and not just Washington um, and their agendas that they have overseas. So until uh, the next time, we will see all of you later. And we're looking forward to moving this work forward and to start educating everybody, the American people and those that are affected by this uh, unacceptable policy the U.S. government has today. Thank you.